here we have a simple schematic. I just made this one to demonstrate a point for you. Uh, this transistor here, which is the transistor that comes from the library when the product ships, it doesn't have pins assigned to the three leads. And um, it's a problem which uh, you will encounter and you will learn how to fix. After you finish this, uh, every schematic that you create, like I told you last time, you need to go to File, you go to Check <coughs> Schematic for Netlist Errors. When you do that for this, we're getting this error here. The error says the selected component includes one or more pins that do not have pin numbers. And which is the selected component out of all of these? The one which is highlighted. You see only Q1 is highlighted. So Q1 is the one with the problem. It's not R1, R2, or R3, or the battery. So it tells me what to do. To correct the problem, the component must be first ungrouped, then assign pin numbers by double checking on each pin and uh, filling in the pin number field. Okay? And after you do that, then you group it again and save it as a, a new component. So I'm going to cancel out of this. Then, what I need to do re in reality to fix this problem, I need to, um, the best way to do this is to bring a new fresh copy of that component from the library. And that was the transistor. That was the MPN transistor. Okay. Just MPN. Okay, here it is. So now that I have a single component, I have it highlighted. I will go to component. I will ungroup it. And then simply you have to uh, come here and uh, put numbers on these pins. Now the best way to do this is to have a data sheet which uh, tells you um, if the manufacturer prefers to start from here and go in a clockwise direction, call this one, two, and three, or one, two, and three. So for now, because we're not getting deep into this program, uh, we're just touching it at the surface, it doesn't matter. You can just start anywhere and go in a clockwise direction. So if I start from here, which is the base, and double click this, I'm gonna call this, actually to do that, you have to deselect, and now go back to this a p a pin, double click it, and then I'm going to call this pin number one. She automatically assigned pin number. And then this is actually the base of the component. And if I click OK, now the number and the label of the part are right there on top of each other. So what you need to do, move them so that they are not on top of each other and they are not in front of the pin to allow you to make a connection. And uh, we'll actually make this invisible. We'll hide them so they don't in, they are not in the way. But in case in one specific project you would like the pin number and pin name to show, then it's a good way. It's a good way now. It's a good practice today uh, to place them in such a way that they will not be in the way of connection. So we finished with pin number one. We'll go to this one here. Make this pin number two. This is the collector. Okay. Then I'm gonna notice that I have the number underneath and the uh, label on the top. I'll keep that uh, convention. So I'm gonna put a C for the collector here and the two for the number here. And down here, this is gonna be the emitter E. I'm, I'm sorry, this is going to be number three, and this is the emitter E. And then again, the E will go up on the top, and the E will go right here. So now, I have my part numbered and labeled, uh, but usually we don't show these numbers and labels because our schematic would be very, very cluttered. So if I go back, double click here, and say 
I want to hide the pin number and I want to hide the pin name, then they are there in my original stamp, but they're hidden. I can go back and um, make them visible anytime I want. If I wanted, for example, to show only the, the pin name, I remove the hide pin name here, and then the pin name shows. So you can do any combination. So we'll just hide them all. And hide this guy. Go to the next pin. Hide this and hide that. And I'm done. Now I need to select the whole thing. Component. Group group to make component for transistors the reference designator the component ID is Q and um, <coughs> you can leave it as a generic Q and every time you want to create a new part which looks like that with a different part value you simply come in here and then insert that new value okay so if I leave it blank it's gonna be a generic NPM transistor it placed a Q right there. That's that's fine. That's a good place. So when uh, the number will be the number of the transistor will be attached to the right. There's plenty of room here on the right. And um, once you're happy with this, select again the whole thing. Go to component. Save the custom component. And um, I can call it NPM generic. Okay, and that goes into my um, custom library. So I'm gonna get rid of this and delete. <coughs> then I'll come over here where I had my problem before. So I will delete this part because remember this is the part that came from the library which wasn't right. And now I'm going to insert the transistor that I created which is in my custom components library. NPM generic, insert into the schematic, pick it up, put it right there. Okay, and now if I go to my file and check schematic for netlist errors, that error should be gone away. Okay, it says no errors or warnings found. Save the schematic, yes. And then we're going to say this is a um, transistor. Now, since I'm here saving this uh, schematic, let me talk to you a little bit about file names, okay? Your file name um, can have spaces, can have uh, dashes and hyphens, but there are some symbols you cannot have in the test in the file name, okay? You cannot have an asterisk or a question mark. You cannot have um, a period. Even though uh, some of you I've seen you have periods and it took them, it's best practice not to include a period because the program expects to find a period right here and after the period to have the file uh, type. And you see down here it says the file type is STH for schematic. So if I don't um, put a period and, dot and then dot STH, if I don't do that, if I just leave it up to this point, then what this program is telling me, it will add the dot and sph after that. Okay? So when you name your file, just make sure that you don't have any of those special characters that are forbidden for file names. And um, what I'll do, um, I'll post on the website the list of all of those characters. There are about eight, I believe that uh, Microsoft doesn't allow in its operating system to be used in the file name. 
Uh, other, than th other than that, you just type, the fi type in the file name. Uh, the file name can be as long as up to 255 characters. So you can have a very long file name. Uh, there is no need to try to make the file name short with some cryptic uh, name, okay? Uh, just use a regular uh, file name spelling out everything to make it easy for you to find it later on and then save it. Okay? Okay, one more thing I would like to uh, show you here. The idea of connecting two lines, two wires, and uh, electrically, and the idea of overlapping those wires without an electrical connection. Just pay attention here. I'm going to use my wire tool, and here is a wire going in the vertical direction, and now here's another wire in the horizontal direction. Notice that when I cross over and I come over here, if I just draw this wire without stopping here and clicking, and going over on the other side without doing that, there's no connection between these two wires. If I zoom in and look at this uh, crossing point here, they visually cross, but electrically they do not cross or connect. So if you wanted to make them electrically connect, then here is an example of how you would have done that. Here is another vertical wire, and then here is a horizontal wire. I will start going from left to right. When I meet this wire, I stop here and I left click. And then I continue, come over here, I left click uh, at the end of the wire, right click to stop it. Now, when you look at these two, go to my selection. There is a connection dot here. And if I zoom in, you're going to see it more clearly. You see this uh, rectangular gray dot? It means that this vertical wire with this horizontal wire do electrically connect at that connect at that point, and here they don't. Okay, so you have to look at the sketch that was given to you, and determine if there is going to be a connection or not. And on the sketches, intentionally, I drew a big a, a, a big round uh, circle filled a filled circle, a dot. When you see that kind of a dot on the sketch that was given to you, it means that you, ha ha you have to make an electrical connection like this. If there is no dot right there, it means they overlap without connection. Okay? No, no, no pin. Yeah, don't use the pin. Right. Because if you use your pin, visually it will look okay, but when you run the netlist uh, check, yeah, it will tell you you have all of these pins and those pins connect to no component. Yes. Right. <coughs> Anything else you would like me to uh, talk about? Okay. So that's the end of this section, and then I'll post this on the website.